So I'm talk, talking about display advertising. And uh, the nice thing of compare, you know, robotic, robotic, robotics and computer vision is um, I'm safe. I don't have a video. So <laughs> my slides should be, should be all right. And <coughs> the, uh, today, you know, we happen to be in uh, Bloomsburg. And part of my talk, not only about AI, in fact, we're also talking about a financial market. What I want to do is I want to draw the analogy between financial market and display advertising market to show that, in fact, there is an analogy. And in fact, some of the things that happen in financial market, not everything bad, you know, some things are very good. Technical-wise, they're brilliant. And then how we, act, we can actually use some of technology and solve this, the, the display advertising problem. And then we build some sort of system around that and the AI would help as a algorithm level, as a, uh, to, as a computer prediction level to help us to predict something and to optimize the, uh, for example, the KPI like clicks, conversion, et cetera. Um, so a bit of intro introduction of, uh, of who we are. So we, I run a, a lab in, uh, in UCR on computational advertising. Um, more broadly, we're working on several topics we studied the statistical machine learning algorithm underpinning like search algorithms and personalization, um, you know, pers recommender system. People brought this book, we look at the user profile, try to predict what the user interest next. And also financial method of this advertising. And Minigama is really the spin out company from our research that we, um, you know, get funded by U UK government, Innovation UK, UCL, and also uh, private uh, private money, and the idea was to um, create the first automatic futures option exchange for display advertising. In fact, the uh, uh, my partner, uh, the co-founder, um, you know, had had a reason to try to build a Bloomsburg terminal for display advertising world. He's sitting somewhere um, over there, you know. Yeah. Um, the idea in, in Midagama, if we look at the technology-wise, is that we want to use financial techniques or ideas, build infrastructure for display advertising. And build on top of it the algorithms, like um, using machine learning, and to help us to do the forecast, make prediction. And a bit of summary of what I'm going to talk about. So for people not familiar with display advertising and what's the reason um, technical development. I'm going to briefly introduce you, um, briefly mentioned real time bidding. And then we'll talk about what's the need, um, why we need to build a futures option exchange for display advertising. And I would also highlight several techniques that we use to make this whole process uh, uh, working in an automatic way. I'm going to look at two examples. One is uh, how we're using machine learning to pricing the advertising inventory and provide dynamic pricing so that to ma maximize, for example, publishers, um, the revenue. And also, for the advertisers, for the, for the agent, agencies, we look at a technique we call statistical arbitrage modeling. And we'll explain what it is and how we can use it to maximize, for example, return um, in, uh, revenue over return, et cetera. And if, we, you, if you ask me five years ago, what is display advertising? I would tell you, you know, it's called contextual advertising. So essentially what they do is that you have advertisers, a big advertiser, a big publisher, they have signed an agreement in the, um, before, bef um, one or two months ago. And then the publishers, usually they need to work it out is that for, for the content, they want to match the right um, ads in such a way, based on the content, they, they, was, they will have some matching um, using machine learning or using natural language processing techniques so that people looking at the content, they might also find the, uh, they might find that the ads also relevant or interesting. So the matching is really the contextual keywords with a, with a category of the campaign or with a particular, um, the, the ads. And now the, What's happening now is that there's a revolution, I would call, is the concept called real-time advertising. So the ads, the impressions, is not really uh, sell, sold in <coughs> a, a package, but rather per impression. If you s sold or transact or, or buy, trade this in, um, ad slot in impression, 
what happens is that you can actually package, package based on the audience data rather than the contextual data. They immediately become very useful for advertiser because they can target to that specific user. So in this case, this is my personal website. If you look at the ads from Google, it's nothing to do with that, that content at all, but rather relevant to the underlying user. For example, I was, at the time I was um, um, working on my home renovation and uh, I'm looking for some lighting um, <laughs> outlet. And this, is a, this was a very uh, website I visited. And since then, this website stalked me, keeping tracking my, whatever I go, even I, you know, <laughs> browsing my personal website, um, you know, for the case, give, try to give an example. And I mean, obviously, it is debatable whether you, when you're retargeting people, is, um, is it jeopardize uh, privacy or not? But you know, static, statistically, uh, people show that response rate, uh, the, you know, it doesn't really matter the reason why I'll be it, but uh, statistics show that re response rate clicks through increase um, uh, dramatically. And so that gives the ability for advertisers to target that, um, target the users. But obviously you can do it in a much better way. You don't really need to stock users, but you can using some um, collaborative filtering, some machine learning clever ways of doing it. And so this, this is an example. So if a, there's some other people visit my website, uh, they might see different ads. It's really uh, targeted to that user. What's, what's the technology behind <laughs> it? So it's very interesting. And in fact, a lot of things happening within that two minute seconds when the user browsing that particular impression. So here is the illustration, hope it works. Um, when the, a particular user visit a publisher website, uh, that triggered, uh, when this uh, impression loading is loading, then the, the triggered ad request, and that ad request sent to the ad exchange. What ad exchange uh, does is that they aggregate all these um, supplies and create an auction and send this uh, signal to the, a place called demand side platform where they aggregate demand and on behalf of advertisers and create a campaign. And when they got this signal, what they do is uh, you can actually query additional information um, for this user cookie ID, uh, what are they looking for? And obviously, they can also track their advertiser's website to see whether this user visited their website in the past or not. And get those information, then they have a clever decision engine. For example, in this campaign, they might say, okay, um, I know this guy, and he's likely to convert. Um, I should put a you know, high bid. So when this bid request sent over to the exchange, exchange, you know, based on that, pick up the highest bid. And uh, then, send uh, the winning notice to someone that win. And this um, DSP send these uh, you know, creatives and, and tracking uh, back to the exchange and then eventually the ad shows. So all this happens in the uh, in, uh, 20 minute seconds. And underlying you have, you, you can invent a lot of you know, machine learning technology to do the bid and to optimize the campaign, et cetera. So, because of that, they created a, a new players or created a new infrastructure where you got this uh, publisher uh, and then the SSP uh, aggregator and on behalf of publisher uh, on the supply side. And then you've got exchange, aggregate everything together and you've got these um, DSPs and then the advertiser. But of course, they have the third party uh, data provider provides like ad serving, analysis, et cetera. Um, so let's, let me give you a glimpse of how big RGB is is the one of the change they got um, 30 billion impression just in a single day. And there's a SSSP called Rubicon, which is a public company, and they hit already a trillion impressions. So what I try to say is that Google is not really the, uh, the only king player. There's other new players coming. So because of this new technology, and then they bring these new players into, into that space. And still, the market still grows um, on two digits um, now and in the future. And uh, sort of a, one of the estimations is at uh, 61 billion um, in 2017 for the programmatic um, advertising. And now, given that spot market, given that real-time bidding happening, is there something missing, um, which is futures options market? Um, let me give you a reason why. And this is the data we got. 
are looking at the, for the campaign level, but also you can look at it in the exchange or the um, DSP, SFC level. The price that's in those exchanges are very volatile. We actually had the measure, and then compared to the um, financial market, it's 12 times much um, more volatile than the financial market. And so not only the price that's usually charged by, uh, this is a CPM, cost per 1,000 impressions, but also the response, the user response, the clicks, for example, the, this is a sort of average cost per clicks, um, which is usually measured by um, how, how good your, your campaign is. And also, this is a winning weight, how likely you're gonna win. You, you, you put a bit, not necessarily you're gonna win. So there's no guarantee you can actually um, get that impression. And also the click-through rate, how likely you're gonna click. And also, uh, I didn't plot the conversion, but the conversion even more, more difficult, is that the, um, the price-wise and the performance-wise, they are very volatile. And they definitely need a, a, a mechanism for that. So <coughs> if you think about this and look at it from the financial, pers uh, financial market perspective, you think that financial perspective, they have, they have various ways to hedge the risk. So what happened in, in other words? They have obviously some new manual negotiation up front, but they're not done in, a, in an efficient way. They are not automatic, automatically done. So the technology of the moment that I illustrated, your whole ecosystem, is still spot market. And there's no principled way for them to say, I want to forward pricing, I want to buy in advance. Do we have automatic way of doing it? Um, can we hatch my risk if I really want to, you know, my cost very stable, how can I do that? And so what we, we think that we definitely need a, a future um, contract and also a mechanism for reduced risk. So this is the diagram that illustrates that. If you, we want to have a complete system, really is that not only this spot exchange, but also have the futures and options and to able to, for advertisers, uh, publishers, has a much, much better way of to, to do the business. And to illustrate, just give you an example, um, a bit of you know, calculation, but we don't really need to go through detail. Just give you an idea how it works. Um, let's say from the publish, uh, a publisher, let's say we have a publisher, and uh, they do real-time bidding to get the revenue through their uh, uh, impressions. Suppose that they sort of estimate they've got 30K impressions um, uh, coming along for the every month, for the following two months, uh, three months. And they bit of worry about say, okay, what if the price decrease in the real time bidding, then obviously my revenue gonna go down. So in, if they just do the business over real time bidding, they can't, there's no mechanism for them to hatch the risk. But with the futures exchange, what they can do is very, very easy. So they can still do the business on that. You look at this, um, you know, the CPM average actually reduced, but it's, it's fine. They can, off, this, can, this revenue stream can be offset by if they buy something in the futures market. For example, they can do is, um, they can do is, at, at the beginning of the month, they can buy some futures contract and they close it at the end of uh, month. And because, the, for, suppose the price goes down, they can actually get some um, profit through the, the trade in the futures market. So this value, this uh, additional revenue stream sort of offset the, the cost, the additional, uh, the, the revenue decrease in the real-time bidding market. So in the end, the effect is really make their revenue sort of a, a really stable. So in other words, it doesn't really matter whether you, the price goes down or goes up. And as long as in, you have, when you do the real-time bidding, you also um, buy or sell this futures contract in such a way that it will against, op has the opposite direction to the programmatic prices that you would like to have and you will be safe. So this gives a bit of you know, um, idea how it works from the publisher perspective. But equally for um, advertiser perspective that um, it works as well. And so this is system level. Um, 
then how can we use machine learning? Because in the system level, is that you can't ask a you know advertiser, publisher sitting there, click the button at the top. This is the impression happening in every minute. So we need to have a, an intelligent way to do that. Um, what we do is build something on, on machine learning AI um, technology on top of the uh, exchange. For example, we have the solution where for advertisers, uh, for publisher, we can actually uh, help them to decide a location of their impressions in future time and in real time, and also figure out the price. So I'm not going to go to detail about the mathematical behind it, but essentially it's optimizing the problem based on the your forecast supply demand. And the solution basically tells you that you should go something like what happens in the um, airline industry, industry where you, in the very beginning you have a bit uh, you know, cheaper price for your inventory and then actually goes up, goes up until at the, very, uh, at the end of, uh, always before the real time bidding that got higher price because it's guaranteed. And the, obviously the price drop in the real time, there's no guarantee. So if you do that, we actually show you can maximize publishers' revenue. And another to topic um, that I'm going to talk about is the, for the advertiser perspective, um, what would be the technology? So this is the interesting bit is that the current market is very efficient. And they have CPA market and also have a CPA market. So CPA, CPA market is advertisers, they tend to buy, for example, looking at the cost per acquisition where in the transaction, in the, in the exchange, or publisher tend to have this cost per sound impression. So there's an efficient in this market. We want to breed a transparency into a market. What can we do? We can actually, using computer algorithm, to build this so-called statistical arbitrage mining solution and to, to balance these two markets. Uh, so this is different with the financial market where people are taking speculation, where we actually um, to try to balance these two different uh, rather segmented market. So the technical really is that it's nothing but a meta bigger, a meta bidder, where you got a list of campaign and you want to maximize, you can using like a logistic regression, factorization, or even a deep learning to have some estimation and you come in with optimization solution. And then you run a portfolio uh, to, to figure out the weight between those campaigns and to maximize. So, Essentially, it's an optimization problem, and we work out an algorithm which is working on an iterative way, like uh, in M step, E step, and figure out the solution. And here is the result. We tested it in the um, wrong various of algorithms, um, state of art algorithms that has, has been used by other, for example, Exchange, uh, DSP. Uh, we actually had much better um, performance in terms of obtaining the, the profit. And also, this diagram shows that the portfolio optimization, which help a lot, based on the, the market fluctuation, we were able to dynamically change our campaign portfolio in order to maximize the uh, certain KPI. And we also test in real situation. So this is a, a nice bit. We don't not only sit on the lab, but also uh, in the business. Uh, we test it as see, the, against a, a one of strong baseline and show that we have the performance in terms of maximize profit. And at the same time, uh, this, those, those diagrams give the idea how the algorithm works. In terms of impressions we got, in fact, we have less impression. We beat, we won. And we actually spend more money on those impressions. However, the result is better because in terms of actions, user conversions, we have a much higher value. And in terms of the cost per acquisitions that we actually get more money by acquiring new user. Um, so this is a, we also testing, we also part of the competition running by a one of DSP that actually we are rank one in that competition. Um, I'm not sure whether the slide's gonna, you know, available, but this will become handy if you're interested in the technology. Um, and that's it, thanks for attention. Thank <laughs> you.